We have the elements. How many? Three. Solids, gases, liquids. All matter comes from those three. The air we breathe is also three atoms. One oxygen, one hydrogen, one nitrogen. But it is the air. Water is normally liquid. But frozen it becomes ice and boiled becomes gas or steam. The same substance yet three forms. Look at the sun. 93 million miles away. It's warm, it's light, it's heat comes to us, yet it is one sun. Time is divided into past, present, future. Man himself is spirit, mind, and body. Even the family is made up of father, mother, and children. From the very first verses in the Bible, the Trinity is revealed for anyone to see. If you have your Bible, you may wish to look at that. We discover, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Here is God, the Creator, the Heavenly Father. In verse 2, we discover God, the Spirit. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Then we are told in verse 3, Then God said, Let there be light. Here in plain language, in the spoken word of God, is the spoken word of God, the speech of God, if you please, the word of God. Centuries later, we hear the echo of this very truth in the Gospel of John, where we are told, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word as a person becomes obvious in verse 2 where we are told he, yes, the word he, he was in the beginning with God. Once again, we marvel at the revelation of the Trinity in the same first chapter of Genesis. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Verse 26. I urge you to tell me, please, was God discussing the making of the crown of his creation with himself? In other words, was he talking to himself? Or was he talking to someone else within this mighty trinity we call God? Indeed, the other two persons within the trinity. Notice the scripture. Our image, our likeness, let us. Three clear cut pronouns. Moving to verse 27, we are astonished again. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. The mystery is unveiled. As we see three pronouns, but not the plural as the above. They are now singular. Yes, one God, no doubt about it. Yet three persons, a blessed trinity. In Genesis 3:22. This truth is brought up again. Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. In the book of beginnings, chapter 11, verse 7, we are informed of this mystery once again. When men were building the Tower of Babel, come, God says, let us go down and there confuse their language. Once again, I ask you, was God talking to himself? If so, why does he say, come let me go down? In the awesome vision of Isaiah, in the awesome vision of Isaiah, in chapter 6, we are the angel's proclamation in verse 3, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Diligent listeners, can you explain to me why? Holy is repeated three times. Why not two or four or more? Is God, the Spirit, the Word are getting clearer to you? Additionally, in verse 8, makes the Trinity ever more clear. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Did you catch it? I send 
go for us. The us is the I, the I is the us. Many of you know Arabic. Although Arabic, some of us say, is my mother's tongue. Actually, it's my tongue. My mother still has her tongue. I've got my tongue. But, listen to this. Our verbs, like in all semantic languages, present a different concept in dealing with grammar. We have the Old Testament in Hebrew, much like Arabic, we have a singular verb, a dual verb, and then three or more. Take, for instance, our word akel. That's a singular, means he ate. Akala, that's two. Eight. Akalu, that's three who ate. Therefore, in all the Semitic languages, the verb frequently identifies the number of persons involved in the action. You in English can refer to one, two, or a million, but not so in Arabic or Hebrew. Even the word Elohim is a plural word, which is the name of God in Hebrew. Heaven is Shama. In Genesis 1.1, we read the word Shamayim, which is a plural meaning heavens. Did it ever occur to you why God revealed himself in this triune manner? I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 24 and 26, the instructions are given for the Aaronic blessing. Why is it a Trinitarian blessing if God is only one? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. From the Christmas story, according to Dr. Luke, chapter 2, verse 13, we recognize the one triune God again. Glory to God in the highest, the angel sang. He is in the highest. And on earth, peace. Everybody sing about that at this time of the year around the world. According to Isaiah 9, 6, one of the titles of Jesus is Prince of Peace. The angels were announcing the embodiment of peace in Bethlehem. Thirdly, we see the spirit of joy, goodwill towards men. The Trinity is depicted powerfully during the baptism of Jesus. And immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven you are my beloved son in whom i am well pleased not only at the birth of jesus and the beginning of his public ministry but also towards the end the trinity is clearly demonstrated on mount tabor a short distance from my hometown of nazareth at the transfiguration god's spirit is seen as a cloud and god the father proclaims this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hada huwa ibn al-Habib, alladhi bihi surat, lahu smau. May I ask you to explain to me, dear friends, the frequency of the figure three, if it did not point to the Trinity in these incidents. The Lord Jesus performed three miracles of catching fish in Galilee. He raised three people from the dead. A girl, a youth, and an adult to show his love for all ages. Three times Peter denied his Lord. Later, three times Peter declared his love for his Lord. Three disciples were witnesses of his transfiguration. Three years he ministered in our world. He was one of three crucified on that date. One because of sin, one in sin, and he for sin. Then he rose on the third day. Can you deny God's proclamation? Are you telling me that the Almighty is misleading us or worse still, lying? Let God be God and don't tell him what he can or cannot say, be or do. Jesus himself, who never told a lie or sinned, concluded his redemptive ministry in this crystal clear declaration found in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. All authority is given unto me 
in heaven and on earth. What prophet dare say that? Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Millions of Christians call this the Great Commission. Many begin their worship services with, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 